This is a lecture on Haskell lists for Comp360 Programming Languages at North Carolina A&T State University. Be sure to read the LearnYourHaskell.com tutorial. It's a lot more interesting than this is. Haskell uses lists as one of its primary data structures. Lists are created with square brackets. Note that the square brackets do not indicate an array. They are the elements of a list. All the elements of a list have to be the same type. They can all be numbers, they can all be letters, but they all have to be the same thing. Haskell considers a string to be a list of characters. Like C++ and Java and many other languages, a string can be defined by surrounding it with double quotes. Single quotes are used to designate a single character. There are several list operators. Uh, the plus plus means concatenate. Doesn't mean increment the number, it means concatenate two lists. And of course, since the elements of a list have to be the same type, both lists have to include the same type of element. In this example, they're numbers. You can add an element to the beginning of a list. Here we show 42 colon then a list, and that makes 42 the first element in a new list. If you add an element to a null list, it makes a one element list. Another operator is exclamation exclamation. This goes out and retrieves the nth element of the list, starting at zero, as most lists do in computer science. Note that these are all infix operators. That is, the operator goes between the two operands. Many functions in Haskell are prefix. That is, you go operator, space, operand, space, operand. Remember that elements are not lists. Plus plus concatenates two lists, but it will not concatenate a list and an element. You can make the element into a list by putting brackets around it. There are all sorts of list functions that are explained in the Learn You a Haskell uh, tutorial. Head returns the first element of a list. If it's an empty list, it returns an empty list. Tail returns everything but the first element in the list it returns a list. Head returns an element, tail returns a list. Last returns the last element of a list. And knit returns a list with everything but the last element. Length, as you might expect, returns the length of a list. It's an integer. Null is very useful. Null returns true if the list is empty. That's really useful in recursion. The head of the list is the first element. The tail is everything else. A knit is everything but the last element. There are a whole bunch of list functions that can also be used for strings because strings are a list of characters. Reverse, as you might expect, reverses a list, puts it in reverse order. Take takes a number and a list and returns that many elements from the list. So you can return the first five elements from a list if you want to. Or you can delete the first five elements with drop. Uh, maximum and minimum do as you might expect. They return the largest or smallest element in a list. Some elements that are useful for arithmetic are sum and product. They return the sum or the product of all the elements in the list. Another very useful method is ELEM. ELEM takes a number and or a value in a list, does not have to be numbers, and returns true if that element is in the list. In these two examples, the elements and the list are numbers, but they could be uh, lists of strings, which are lists of lists, or lists of characters, or any sort of list. Here's an example of a list of a function that returns the list rotated around by one character. That is, the first element is put on the end and all the others move forward. 
and you can see uh, we define rotate list to be the tail of the list concatenated to bracket head list bracket. The brackets are important because taking the head of a list returns an element, not a list of elements. Again, remember a recursion. Uh, you generally have an if statement in the beginning to check and see if you've come to the end of the recursive state, if you come to a base case. And then you call the recursive function with a smaller value. Here's an example of recursion to sum all the numbers in a list. The first thing we do is see if the length of the list is zero, that is, if there's nothing else in the list. And of course, the sum of a empty list is zero. Otherwise, if it's not empty, we take the head and add the this recursive sum of the tail of the string. Notice we had to put tail str in parentheses because my sum takes one list as a parameter. And if you left off the parentheses, it would interpret tail to be the parameter to my sum and tail is a function, not a string. It would have been easier to use the built-in sum function. This is just an example. Uh, you can specify ranges. So instead of going all the numbers in a list, you can go one colon colon five, and that makes a list of the integers from one to five. Uh, you can also specify uh, increments by putting like one comma three dot dot 12, and it will subtract the difference between the first and second element, and then increase all the following elements by that amount. You can do this with anything that can be incremented, so by numbers, or you could use letters, and it would go up by that value. Here's uh, a method you can try writing. Uh, you can try this with Haskell yourself, or just try writing it down. We want to write a method that sums the squares of the numbers. In this example, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, add them all up and you get 29. So try this. You can pause the video while you try it. Did you really try writing the function? You learn by doing. A possible solution here is the sum square of the list equals if the list length is 0, that's the base case, then return zero. Zero is the length of an empty list. Otherwise, take the head and multiply it by the head to square that value and add it to the sum of the squares of the tail of the list, recursing on the sum square method with the tail. We could have used the null function to determine the end of the list. Null is true if the list is empty. So in this example, it's almost the same as the previous solution, but instead of saying if length of list equals zero, we just have no list. No list is easier to write than length list equals equals zero. I like easy. Try this example. Write a function that multiplies all the numbers in a list by a given number's second parameter. In this example, we're going to multiply 2 times 7 to get 14, 2 times 3 to get 21, and 4 by 7 to get 28. Pause the video and try this. Here's a possible solution. Uh, again, we check and see if the list is empty. If the list is empty, then we just return an empty list. Otherwise, we take the head of the list, multiply it by the number, and concatenate it to the beginning of recursive call to the tail of the list. Sometimes when you create a list, you want to have all the elements that you might possibly use. You can create an infinite list by leaving off the end of the range. In this example, we have bracket three comma five dot dot bracket with no end number. And that creates a list going up by twos, three, five, seven, all the way up to an infinite number of values. Haskell uses Elise evaluation, so it will not create that list until it needs to. 
the take method returns a another string that has the first, in this case, four elements of the a list. So we can define the infinite list, 3, 5, dot, dot, which goes all the way up to infinity, but we only need the first four elements, so we'll return 3, 5, 7, 9. Be careful with infinite lists. The sum of 1 to infinity is going to take a long time to calculate. A list contains lists of lists. Remember, of course, that lists have to contain all the elements of the same type. So if you have a list of lists, each of the lists inside the list have to be have elements of the same type. In this example here, we have lists of characters. We can then concatenate that list of characters with another list of characters. Note the following, the end list there, the bracket bracket x comma y bracket bracket has to be a list of lists because the first Ray is a list of lists. If you just use bracket x comma y bracket, that wouldn't work because that would be a list of characters, not a list of list of characters. Be sure to read learnyouhaskell.com starting out. Ah, we're done with another lecture. Thank goodness.